What is up guys? It is Steady Chaos. I'm back and I know it's been a while. It's been at least 10 days since I've uploaded. I was in the midst of a move the last few days and that's why I didn't upload anything. My computer was in storage. I didn't have an internet connection. It was a hot mess. But here I am. I'm situated for now and I'm going to be good for the next five to six weeks. And then on November 15th will be my family and I will be officially moving into our new home. So for the time being, I'm staying with my in-laws but again, just five to six weeks, and during that time, I can upload videos still. And then around November 15th, when we move into our new home, I'll probably go dark again for 10 days, but I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. So for now, I'm back, and I thought with this video, we talk about filmmaker mode and specifically how accurate it is pre-calibration. Now, if you've been following this channel or you're subscribed to the channel, you'll know I've made previous videos talking about the pre-calibration accuracy of HDR game mode and SDR game mode. And both of those modes are very, very inaccurate out of the box, like horribly inaccurate, pushing way too much blue, you know, average uh, delta error for color uh, over seven, average grayscale delta error over seven. So here now we're seeing the pre-calibration out of the box, completely unchanged, settings or stock settings for filmmaker mode and lg touts filmmaker mode as being the most accurate preset for the lg c1 out of the box and also the lg c10 so you can see when you look at the color readings very very accurate uh all the color readings these little dots you want them to be within the squares they are all at least on the edge of the squares if not completely in the square like here when you see red in green, you see a little bit of it straying, but it's still touching the square and the same deal with the blues. We'll know that uh, with the blues, like I had said earlier, in HDR game mode and SDR game mode, the blues are way too intense. You'll see the circles being down here and then these circles being all the way over here. TV pushing way too much blue, but in filmmaker mode, it's not doing that nearly as badly. You're talking about color performance, average error of 1.7. A good score is below 3 and a reference level is below one. So you're almost at reference level with filmmaker mode as far as color reproduction and color accuracy right out of the box, which is good. And you can see here the RGB balance. It has a very good balance of RGB with a dip around 70 to 80, but that's just the tone mapping at play. That's normal. If you're on your C1 or C10, you see a dip around 70 or 80, even after it's been calibrated. Again, that's normal. That's the tone mapping working there. So you see pretty good overlap of RGB here, uh, a little bit heavy on the blue, a little bit light on the red and green that could be fixed with the calibration, but again, not too bad. And then you look at the Delta error for grayscale. Again, you want a good score below three uh, and you want a ideally a score, an average error below one to get that reference level performance. If you look, grayscale performance is 3.6, so that's that's solid. That's not bad. It's it, it certainly could be better, but it's not terrible like it was with game mode. With game mode, you were getting an average error of around 7.5, 8, 8.5, which is really bad. You do have a max error of 8.8, .8, but again, average of only 3.6, so not bad. And you see there's definitely some grayscale errors in the higher readings here, the 80 to 100. That could be improved. You have readings of 6.9, 6.1 errors, 6.2, 6, and 6.1. So you could definitely bring that more into alignment with the calibration. But again, for filmmaker mode out of the box, not bad. And then luminance here, you want your TV's uh, luminance performance, which is this gray line, to perfectly match up with this ideal yellow luminance performance. So you see the TV is rolling off at around 400 plus, 400-ish nits and peaking out at about 750 nits in filmmaker mode. And it follows that curve very, very closely and nicely up through about 380 with a gentle roll off, like I said, up to 750. So not bad performance there either. So I think the moral of the story here is if you don't use your LG C10 or C1 for gaming much at all, if you don't use game optimizer mode then at all very much, um, and you just, you concern yourself with movies, you concern yourself with TV watching, and you want accurate color reproduction and grayscale reproduction and an accurate luminance curve, then you would probably be okay with filmmaker mode in terms of accuracy unless 
unless you are an absolute video file, uh, I don't think you would have to go out of your way to get Calaman or some sort of calibration equipment in a color emitter to fix filmmaker mode. I think for the most part, filmmaker mode is accurate enough to satisfy most users when watching a movie and when watching TV. So a bit of good news here uh, for LG C10 and C1 owners. Of course, keep in mind, when it comes to pre-calibration readings, each TV is a little bit different due to panel variants. So your TV's filmmaker mode on the C1 or C10 might be a little bit more accurate than mine or it might be a little bit less accurate than mine. But by and large, there is no question that the colors and the grayscale and the luminance curves are far more accurate in filmmaker mode than they are in game mode. All right, guys, that's going to do it for me. If you have enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please subscribe. Please like the video and please comment down below. And if you wish, please share the video. It would help me a lot. All right, guys, that's going to do it. See ya.